scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. So I decided to compartmentalize my life into all the dimensions that I know would be required for my excelling and my living an impactful life. And I started to pursue exact knowledge. I don't just want to pursue random spiritual growth just reading the bible anyhow you just open to there and say Kai, i feel like reading exodus now you are you are doing the same thing that a student does by hopping to any faculty at all and says no knowledge is a waste imagine that you hop to just anywhere and say after all i'm, I'm still learning yes you are learning but your knowledge is not guided and is not specific so it cannot make any noticeable impact are we together There is one thing that you can know, please hear me, and never beg for bread again until Jesus comes. There is one thing you can know, and it will look as if there is a charm on men every time they see you. These are possibilities. Let God be true. And let every man, let every culture, let every background, let every situation, let every mountain be a liar. There is something your business can have and know and do. People of God, that what you see now that you call success will be what those you raise will be doing because you will scale to a height unimagined. Not peg yourself and plateau at a level and convince yourself this is all there is. No. I came to challenge you. It is the power of light. When you faint, it's proof that there is weakness somewhere. And much more than just an impartation, he sends light first. An impartation is useless. Remember the oil assumes the shape of the container. If you turn the container this way, the oil will look like it's pouring. If you keep the container up, the oil will look secured. The oil is there with its potential, but the container controls what it does. When your capacity is small, impartation becomes almost unfruitful. That's why people fall down and stand up again and again and return back. Because your container was almost pouring. And as you were putting the oil, it still came out. But when God expands you, and then that grace comes on your life, it will be like the foxes of Samson. You will say, where is that challenge that brought shame to me yesterday? I'm not praying that you go. By you I will leap over walls. And you look at it and greet your landlord and say, sir, thank you so much for driving me. I Would you be available for my Thanksgiving? Say, Thanksgiving of what? You gave birth to a child? Say, no, 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 I just finished my estate. In how many months? Five. He said, you are a thief. You've, I'm not a thief. Light. Light is not a ladder. It's a lift. It can take you to dimensions unimagined. Let me tell you this. Time never changes anything. One day go better is just a wise saying to comfort you. It will never work. Time does not change anything. Time only reveals. When you have an encounter with the light of God and you embrace it, then things will turn around in your life. Are we together? There are so many laws. I don't know if I'll have the time to share them. 
But the Lord shared with me a number of spiritual laws and I have learned it from the power of uncommon mentorship. These are the laws that manipulate life like you are playing a chess. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, life does not honor bold face. All these one, no, get the thing. Don't get it once and for all. Prophesy to your neighbor, say, get it once and for all. I know God has called me to be a great prophet of God. When you keep guessing prophecy, one day you will go wrong. And the day you go wrong, it will be that you are prophesying to a mohole. And then you will go wrong. And the man will say, up from the service, I'm waiting for you outside. Why fake what can be real? I carry favor. I carry favor. No, if you have to say it, it's not there. Favor is so loud, even a deaf man will know it's working. Everybody loves me. What is the proof? If only your tribal people love you, you are not favored. No. All men seek for thee. All, 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 all. All, regardless of territorial limitations there is a grace is God helping us I'm saying this because in the name of Jesus in this conference these graces must land upon someone's life that you will walk out of this place and it will be like pastor shared a charm as soon as you step out someone who forgot you Listen, ringing people's phone to say, remember me, is the worst way to command favor. You will never get it that way. You become a nuisance till they block your line. There is a name God is called, the father of spirits. I believe this. I stand by the message of God to tell you this man standing before you is a testimony of these things I speak. The things that we have seen, the things that we have heard, the things that our hands have handled even of the word of life. You are not being taught cunningly devised fables. I usually insist that I become the first guinea pig to any revelation I receive from God. If it does not work in my life, I suspend it. I teach by conviction. That's why I don't teach everything. If you pay attention, your pastor brought you here to truly shift your life. And I want you to believe it. Now, I don't mean to insult your intelligence. I know that there are many of us that God has helped. But is that all? Even in heaven, he said, come up here. Come up here and I will show you the version of you you have not seen. Apostle, but I'm rich. How rich? Let me tell you. You are only rich when any amount you give doesn't affect you. If you've not gotten to that realm, you are not there yet. You are not rich when you have comfort. You are not rich when you fly first class. You are not rich when you have a flourishing business. When you can invest no matter what to turn a man's life around and commit to the purposes of the kingdom and it has no effect in you. You have entered the wealthy place. Are you there? Apostle, but I'm anointed to what degree? You prayed for 50 people, only two God healed? Mark yourself. What score is that? Listen, this conference is for people who are dissatisfied with where they are. People who know that, thank God for what you have done yesterday, but Lord, there has to be more. There has to be more. Are we together? Let me tell you this. I love a lot of people, but you never see me close to people who do not have a hunger for more. Once I see a sign of complacency, I love you, but you will not see me near you again. Because, not because I hate you, it will affect me. There is a generation waiting for the other version of you and be selfless enough to pay the price to rise there. This version of you have done so far, but what do you know? While you rise slowly, people are dying who you should save. Must your mother die before you learn the principles of increase? 
the woman labored for you if you wait till you understand the loss of wealth for the next 10 years why wait that far is it that hard you were told by mediocres is that hard but come to the technology of the spirit where there is exactitude you can learn these things and know them thank God for your pastor be careful who you listen to sincerity is not the only key for change correctness of information is you can listen to a well-meaning person who is a victim of his own reality it is dangerous to turn experiences into doctrines if I buy my first car at 45 I can build a theology around my pain and lack of favor to mean if you are blessed at 21 is a lie I introduce to you God's system where any man is no respecter of person you can sit today and choose that by August my church my business you can choose today that there are things I will wave goodbye in this conference and they have to wave me back that these Egyptians I see today I will see no more is God speaking to us how long will it take before that anointing comes on your life you continue to see people cry every night it's called a global impact church not a Lagos impact church you continue to see people there the last meeting they invited you they sent you away as if it was a funeral no one was healed no one was blessed every word of knowledge was wrong the scriptures were wrong you forgot what you studied come on go and sit down get something of substance don't give excuses and say the people didn't have faith. Have you ever seen doctors complain about patients? There are even patients who are in ICU. Why then are you a doctor? I'm not shouting at you. I hope you understand. There has to be some way of shaking you. I love you too much to leave you the way you are. I share your pastor's burden that a fire will come upon you. That something will come upon you. You will go back and say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He said, have you forgotten about yesterday? He said, I'm not in yesterday. The yesterday version was the defeated one. And he said, Goliath, let me even tell you how you will fall first before I start. The stone will hit you down and will remove your head and give it to the birds. And Goliath will reply and say, am I a dog? I hope you know that Ramesses, who later became the Pharaoh, was a half-brother of Moses. That was Moses' position. It was because Moses ran away. So when Moses came to Ramesses, Ramesses said, Ah, bros, we know ourselves. We played together, we laughed together. Moses said, No. The Moses you played with changed in the burning bush. The difference between the yesterday Moses and the tomorrow Moses was a light bush. The bush burnt and burnt everything. I, I know I'm speaking to someone here. That in the name that is above all names. They may laugh at you and they may see you. And think nothing good will come out of you. But in the name of Jesus I prophesy to you. You will receive an unction from the Holy One that will turn your life around. Please sit down. We are going to pray. I found out in this scripture verily verily whoever believes in me the works that I do he shall also do I believed it I found in this scripture Genesis chapter 12 verse 2 1 and 2 in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed when I saw it I believed it that young boy who was lying down somewhere I said, I saw a scripture that changed my life. He said, Abraham, from where you are, lift up your eyes. So I can lift up my eyes from where I am. I don't need to climb a plane to lift my eyes. I can stand in my city and lift up my eyes. And I will still see. From any city in the world, when you look up, you see the stars. When it has to do with the stars, where you live is not a disadvantage. So I lifted up my eyes from where I was. Hmm. 
that you will know what to do like Jesus. You will go back and knock on the door of finance and say, I'm no longer begging you. Please open those gates. And all of a sudden, you will begin to see the blessings of the Lord. Then you will understand that the testimonies you hear are not a lie. You see, when you, when you are used to pain, you will get angry when people are testifying because you will think it's too real. They are lying. Is it not in your Bible that when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, he said we were like them that dream. We are like them that dream. That the songs we sing as special numbers will become our experience. Ah! That you've heard people tell somebody, stand up and go and bless or not. You've only heard it as a testimony. But now you will be a partaker of it. That you are sitting in your house and prepared blessings come to you. And you don't just laugh and people say you are lucky. Yo, but you know you are operating by keys. And regardless of where you go, it will work. That now you can scale your business. It may not be the devil that stopped you from scaling your business. Let me tell you. It may be that God already knew that this version of you and the version of understanding you have. Scaling your business will be the worst thing that will happen to you. So he delayed you as an act of his love. To minimize wastage in your life. Until the required light comes. So after this conference he can tell you now you can go. And then you take over Lagos. Like Reverend Sam prophesied to you. Men do not rise by mistake. Nobody wins the Olympic by mistake. You can go to the stadium by mistake. But you don't win by mistake. It's time for us to be intentional over our results. I'm bringing you to a level of quintessence in the spirit. Where we stop shadow boxing, guessing things. What is the principle for restoration? Do you know it? What is the principle for favor? I know favor just happens. No, sir. Then you will never see it. What is the principle? When I'm in trouble, what do I engage to come out? Because I live in a wicked world. What if my boss hates me and vows that for as long as you're a member of Global Impact Church, I will frustrate you here? Ah! Do you know the ordinances that you can engage? Is it not in your Bible that when a man's ways pleases the Lord, that he makes even his enemy? But it's not under, you see, when the Bible talks, it talks prophetically. You need the eyes of the Spirit to x ray what was said and see where you play the role that you have to play. Otherwise, we'll continue to quote scriptures to our detriment. When you watch a professional drive, there are many things you are looking at that you are not seeing. You don't even see when he changes the gear, when he initiates the trafficator and the rest. Then he gives you the whole thing. And you find out there are many things to be done. And yet you are just still with him. It's called mastery. Please hear me. The church that Jesus is returning back to get is not a weak church that has been beaten by life. And then we scrounge our way out. Capism is not the doctrine we were given. We are given victory. The Bible says, and this is the victory that overcomes even our faith. Are we together? That you must insist. I'm going to be praying shortly. But you must insist. Lord, this cannot be it. This cannot be it. Thank you for what you have done, but this, I know there is more. I confess my ignorance. I've not taught you any exact principles now. We'll deal with that. For it now, you've, you've been, you've come here since morning. So our next time we'll take specifics and just end some of these things in our lives. Why do men hate me? Why is it that I love the Lord with all my heart? But every time I come to men, I cannot get their help. No helper helps by himself. There is something that makes them help us. Every man is a man until the mysteries of the kingdom turn them to help us. If you call men, you will never get anything. But if you call helpers, they will come. If you're in ministry here and you came for this conference, please listen. Ministry when you have your tribesmen around you. Their solidarity is too small to make you global. You need an understanding that takes you far. When men of other nations call on you and call on your God, when there is a clarion call, a Macedonian call, it is because the hand of the Lord is upon you. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. 
with me is riches wealth and honor yet durable riches when your children become small and they are mediocres it is not their state listen it is not even you're not being educated it's not true Psalm 112 says, Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. He said, His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Then he says, Wealth and riches shall be in his house, yet his righteousness endures forever. Is that true in your life? Or is it just a devotional? I'll call upon a man and a nation will answer you. Is it true? Do you believe that? Do you believe that in one day Zion can be born? Is it not in your Bible? Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish the dominion thereof? Is it alright if we honor Pastor Amos Fenwa? God bless you. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. You are the glory You are the glorious God. You are the mighty God. And you not holy true. You are the glorious God. Please listen. Everyone in this place, I want you to know is God's desire to take you to a higher dimension. But that growth must be intentional. Growth must be engaged through light. Light is powerful. John chapter 1 and verse 5 says that the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. The darkness comprehended it not. If I want my life to change, it takes more than good intention. It even takes more than just being a Christian casually. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 says, Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. It's one thing to know God, but it's another thing to enter into the experience. I don't know if I've succeeded in making someone angry this afternoon to say this level I am now, I've exhausted it. When a baby spends more than nine months in the womb, it's a call for concern. Two years is demonic. Even ten months is demonic. They outsource a process of removing that baby by force. It's called CS. In other words, young man, you are coming out. You have encompassed this mountain long enough. It's time for you to move. Listen to me. Some of you have buried your challenges and you have even said, can God make a way in the wilderness? To the point that every time you pray and you ask the Lord to do things, you don't even add those issues. As far as the blessing of the Lord is concerned, Lord, just do whatever you want to do. Supported by a sincere but wrong theology that regardless of what it is, God is the doer of everything. There are all kinds of well-meaning but destructive theology that are usually the product of pride when you do not outsource intelligence from a realm higher than yours that means if it must be known by me it must be revealed to me if it's revealed to another and let me tell you this lack of finance can destroy and destroy your spiritual life more than you know I always teach that finance is not about money. It's about time redemption. It's a cost to spend your life looking for money. You will never, it takes time to know God. And it takes time to be impactful. It takes time to build understanding. Pursuing money all your life is a cost. God cannot design a system like that. We have built, some of you here have schools. And you build the curriculum with such intelligence. How will God design a system where a man comes and all he does in his life is just trying to? And you know, every time you pretend that finance is not important, you implicate your destiny. Let me show you one scripture. Is that all right if I show you? Genesis chapter 42. 
Mm. And then we'll pray. Genesis chapter 42. Please give me volume, Mike. Let's start from verse 1. Please read with me if you're a Christian. It's projected. Ready? One to read. Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said to his sons, Why do ye look upon one another? Verse 2. And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Stop. I've heard that there's corn where? There is a technology with which Satan takes men to Egypt. He keeps corn in Egypt. And even if you are a prophet, you must go to Egypt to eat corn and become a slave in Egypt. Hunger is the authorized channel for leading men to Egypt. Corn. He said, get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live. Help me please. And not die. Without corn you will die. And the devil ensures that there is famine in the land and corn only in Egypt. A prophet was hungry and he sent his future to Egypt to look for corn. Prophets can be hungry. If you don't master the art of this corn and wine, you must go to Egypt. Corn has taken many people to Egypt, Pastor. Corn has relocated people out of God's will. Corn has made Nigerians to smuggle their way from Nigeria through Chad, through this, down. I mean, you see what people go through in search for corn. Corn has brought people into all kinds of things that should not be. But the Bible says, wealth and riches shall be in his house. In his house. When it was time to do the miracle, he didn't tell the widow of Zarephath, go somewhere. He said, I want to bring that miracle in your house. In your house. Please hear me. Everything God told you in his word is real. God does not scam people. Between his promises and performance and mysteries and light that you must know. And failure to know it will keep you quoting scripture till you die. Quoting scripture is important but it's only a key. One key may not open all doors. Please hear me. We're going to pray. I trust God that what I've shared with you would have challenged you. That in the course of this conference and as other speakers continue to come and build on this, you will make up your mind. I may not know what the solution is, but one thing I know is I must get out of this situation now. There is an insistence that must come. My church must grow. Lord, it is to your glory. My business must grow. Lord, it is to your glory. I can't be paying the school fees of my child and is returning back with an evil report. There are reports called evil reports. The spies came with it. It's an evil report. God himself said it. Every other thing is increasing except your salary. Bills increasing. Everything increasing. And you get to a point where you cannot pray again. The last thing you remember saying is in Jesus name. And worry continues the prayer. You walk up and down a house. How do I rent this hall now? Your wife says, honey, say if you call me that name again. You were not like that. Egypt is doing something to you. Please listen to what I'm telling you. You are going to pray. People are depressed. Have you seen people who talk to themselves alone in the car? No traffic until they go and die. I mean, you kick your car and drive yourself to a tree. In life, is this how things will be? How old am I that I'm depressed? And before you know it, you are in the hospital. I reject that for anybody here. High blood pressure used to be something for older people. People after 50. Now you see someone, some of you are doctors here. 2021. You measure his BP and you say, what are you thinking about? Say, doctor, if you know what is on this head as you are seeing me. 
I started fending for my family from age 15. Why wouldn't I have high blood pressure? Do you think you can be a pastor under that condition? No, sir. Ask any man of God here to prepare a sermon takes time. And that time will only come when some things are settled. Let's not tell ourselves the truth. The, let's, let's, let's not lie to ourselves. Are we together? So every time Satan manipulates the economy, something is happening. Like many of you now, joyless people all around. Not because they were like that. You, know how, you want to know how people really are? See them when they are old. You now say, Daddy, why were you angry all through in your youth? I mean, you're a happy man. He said, I started happy. I'm ending happy. Something happened on the way. This anger was not my making. This is what God is correcting. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what he's correcting. Don't mind ignorant people that tell you don't focus on these things. Let me tell you, I say it with all humility. This man talking to you knows God and I understand the anointing. But I know what will happen. A prophet sent his children. They were not captured in war. Hunger made him say, see, I'm a prophet but I'm about to die. Go to Egypt. Go and look for corn. You may never believe that one day you can send your child to go and do what should not be done until hunger comes. When you hear, listen, let me tell you this. When you, when you hear that a family, someone is collecting bribe, just say, Lord, help me. Oh. For as long as there is an uncle paying that rent for you, it's all right. The day the uncle says, well, I've tried for you. You too, you have seen the faithfulness of God. I send you in the name of Jesus. And just when he's sending you, the landlord now says, please, this thing is 1.7. Or you go out. You will pray. You will fast. You will beg friends. And get to a point where you say, you know what? See, this life. And Satan will come. He came two years ago. You casted him. No, no, I'm holy. He waits first. Satan is not a fool. He's many things but a fool. He will come at your point of pressure. Even Jesus. When Jesus was weary at Gethsemane, here he comes again. And Jesus said, is it possible that we negotiate salvation? But he said, no, nevertheless. Nevertheless. So that our children will not be sent to Egypt to go and look for corn, for God's sake. No. His righteousness endures forever. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. By the grace of God, please, whatever price you have to pay, please do not miss the next session. I want to share with you a few systems of the kingdom. I guarantee you in the name of the Lord God of heaven, building on what our fathers have come to communicate here, if you pay attention to it, your life will completely turn around. It is true. Lagos is a good land, but for some of us, that testimony is not in our lives. People come into your city and eat of the bread of the earth. And we are domiciled here. No door opens, not even a window. This is real. They say, what happened? You say, no, pastor, what didn't happen? Which one will I start with? My children, my wife, my wealth, my spiritual life, your blessing. Monies that were locked up 10 years ago was released. And everything, and you just sit and God says, now you are done. Give me time. And you can say on Tuesday, I'm locking myself. This whole family will spend time worshiping God. On Tuesday, yes sir, you will do it. You already have the heart. You just need the systems to be in place. Be magnified, oh Lord. You are highly exalted And there is nothing you can't do Oh Lord, my eyes are on you Be
Hallelujah. You're going to pray one prayer and then I pray for you. And please just lend me five more minutes of your time, Pastor. I don't know how you are going to pray this prayer, but this is not a prayer that you just pray keeping quiet. You find whatever corner you can find and be alone with God in this conference and say, Lord, things have to change. Things have to change. Global Impact Church. Impact Church. Think greatness. Greatness. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life. That even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.